This is it. It all begins here. In the dune desert. Because it's big, it's open, and it's relatively flat. Before I begin, I'd just like to say that I'm doing this whole thing without mods. Except for... <laughs> Except for one thing, I am using the save editor to enable a kind of creative mode. So I can just build everything for free and I don't have to spend half my time gathering all the crap and then bringing it to where I need it. Otherwise I'd be there for 10,000 years. I've also got unlimited jet fuel as well because... Otherwise, you know, blah, 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 blah. so, you know, I'm bending the rules of vanilla just a little bit, but, you know, hey-ho, it's what it's and such and things. I'm starting this at the beginning of update 6, so there's no blueprints, so I can't use that. So yeah, just one thing at a time, over and over and over and over and over again. So I'll start by laying down some foundations, and for very specific reasons, I'm going to lay 81 by 51. You'll find out why later. So you may have noticed I'm building this quite high up. And the only reason for that is this one tree. If I jump down here, I'll show you why this tree is so annoying. You see it like the top branch just hits the bottom of the foundation right there. So that's as low as I can build, unfortunately. So this one tree is the sole reason that I'm having to build this entire factory so high up. Other than that. There's no other reason to be having this conversation. Alright, that's the bottom layer doing. Nice. <laughs> Jumped ahead quite a bit here. But I have about a hundred hours of video here that I'm clipping a lot down and it's probably still going to be about an hour long. So there's going to be a lot of cuts. Anyway, as you can see I've started laying the refiners. You can also see the floor is now glass. There's f the normal foundations are still underneath, but there's a floor in between now for the logistics and the pipes, which will be needed for the refiners, which bring all the oil in the game. And I do mean all the oil. So in total, there's 780 refiners on this floor, 390 of them to turn the oil into heavy oil residue and another 390 to turn that residue into 46,800 petroleum coke and some leftover polymer resin which will just get sunk. So that's all the refiners laid down and as you can see I've already started connecting them up. So I've got the first row is making residue, the second row makes the coke, the third row makes residue, coke, residue, coke, blah blah blah. And the pattern repeats like that. This is my favourite part doing the floor holes for the conveyors and then collecting the conveyor lifts to them it's just it's like the most fun thing you can do in this game I think and there's gonna be a lot of it just a pre-warning there and now for the pipes which is just as tedious oh it's always nice to find out you placed an entire row in just slightly the wrong place and some more floor holes why not this is fun, right? Doing the same thing over and over. Probably makes for an entertaining video, no doubt. <clears throat> and I believe that is the last row of conveyors. Nope, wait, mess one up. There we go. I missed the first row of pipes. Silly me. Just figuring out the conveyor logic now for the coke and the polymer resin. The coke needs to go up to the next floor for the next process. So I'm going to place the lifts along opposite walls, which just so happen to be exactly the right length to accommodate the large quantity of conveyors, thanks to the power of foresight and extensive planning. And I'm leaving gaps between each one because I also need to bring iron into this factory at some point. We'll get to that. And some coal as well, but... Blah, 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 blah. So that's the basic pattern for one row. Just need to repeat it for all the other rows. <laughs> and, yet again, I forgot the last row. How foolish. I'll just go and do that. Oh, 
Just need to connect these conveyors up to the sinks and I can move on to the next floor and the next stage of the factory. Some weird hover pack drifting going on here. Pretty sure this is a bug. Turns out, yes, it is a bug. And for some reason, it's tied to the frame rate. So all I had to do was just set the frame rate to unlimited because I had it set to 120. Don't know why, but it was, so it was an easy fix. On to the next floor. And it's more of the same. I'm just placing conveyors and conveyor floor holes. Only this time, I'm placing foundries instead of refiners. Exciting, right? So here is the logistics for the foundry floor. All the coke and iron comes up through here and it's distributed through this manifold to the foundries above. There's a surplus at the end of each row and for complicated reasons that I can't remember, that's just the way it is. So this is the basic pattern and guess what I need to do now? But before we do that, there's more. If we go up a floor, there's another floor of conveyors because the one below was the input floor this is the output floor for the foundries so the ingots come out here and above will be the next floor which will turn the ingots into beams this is even more tedious than it looked so I miscounted how many foundries I need just go ahead and delete those yeah and all the conveyors too Okay, that should be all the foundries I need. I hope. Oh, these conveyor lifts. Don't even get me started. Why can't they just have the same orientation every time? It can't remember the direction you placed the previous time? Why do you always have to rotate them? It's okay. It's fine. I'll get used to it. Ah. <sighs> This is a lot of conveyor holes. I hate these lifts so much. If they just stayed in one direction, I wouldn't mind. Well, that's enough lifts for now. Time to fill the gaps with mergers. Fun, fun, fun. Okay, that's all the foundries and all of their conveyors finally completed. The output conveyors, at least. You see all those conveyor holes on the ceiling? Yep, gotta connect them all up as well. What joy we have ahead of us. One eternity later. Yes, I'm still going. Two eternity later. Well, at least these lifts snap to the splitters, so at least I don't have to put up with that annoying rotating lift thing. Whew. One more row complete. I'm definitely over halfway by now. Three. And the foundry conveyors are all done. Here's how the floors look so far. So on the bottom is the refiner input logistics. And then there's the refiners themselves. And this is the input logistics for the foundries, which I've just noticed I haven't finished connecting up yet. I'll get to that later. Then there's the output floor, and above that is the foundries. And their ingots come out here. And another thing I just noticed is all the machines have a red indicator on them. Which means... Power! Yeah. Oh yeah, and I need to set each machine to make the thing and copy paste 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 next floor constructors a whole bunch of them i kind of did this a little too fast and in doing so i discovered this cute little bug if you stand as far away as you can and then spam build and run away the building animation pauses and you get golden constructors so if I just zoom in a little bit here, you can see the constructors at different levels of builtness. Got a nice little wobbly haze effect on them ones where they're still being built. And if I walk closer to them, one by one they fill in. Pretty interesting, right? I thought it was anyway. 
It also works with other buildables. You can just place one as far away as your build gun will reach, turn around and crouch jump away as fast as you can, and there you go. Here's the biomass burner. Here's a packager, which I almost didn't get in time. Here's a refiner. I really tried with the space elevator, but it's just too big, you can't get away in time. Anyway, back to doing this again. Woo! At least with only one input with this floor, I can just fit everything on the same floor, so I don't have to worry about an input floor and an output floor, there's just one. So hopefully this won't take as long as the foundries. Five conveyors of ingots go in, and one conveyor of beams comes out. Ingots go in, beams come out. Ingots go in, beams come out. Knife goes in, guts come out. Knife goes in, guts come out. Spare my life, and I will grant you three will. Ah! Knife goes in, guts come out. This is just so, you know, it's, it's, it's therapeutic, you know? You put everything in a perfect line, and you pull all the conveyors down, exactly the same way, except you always need to rotate them. And it's always different. Isn't that like just amazingly enjoyable? Well you see, no, it's not. You know why it's not? It's a pattern. It's not even random. It's an alternating pattern. It's almost like it's specifically designed this way. So you see the first one, it goes this way. And then the next one, it goes this way. You see? Then it goes this way, and then it goes back the other way. And then it goes this way, and then it goes through a bed. So today, I decided to go outside. And I don't mean in real life. I ain't gonna, I'm not touching grass. I mean, outside the factory. Because that absolute monolith is starting to drive me a little crazy. So we're just gonna focus on bringing all the goods in and underneath this bitch. So we got whatever that means, and all the way over here we need 65 conveyors of iron on this side. So we're gonna need a lot of resources and a lot of miners, and I'm gonna have to overclock all of them, which means I need a lot of power slugs. But before that, I'm gonna need a better weapon because the rebar gun's all very well, but with a clip size of one, it's just it's not very convenient, is it? And I'm going to encounter a lot of enemies, because they're always roaming around resources. So I should probably make a rifle. And a lot of rifle ammo. But to do that, I need smoke loss powder, which, for some reason, at this point in the game, I can't buy from the shop. Probably due to the game being an experimental. And to make the powder, I need heavy oil residue. Which, obviously, since it's a liquid, I can't handcraft, so the first destination on this little side quest is oil. Set up a little temporary factory here, just to stockpile a bit of ammo that I'm inevitably going to need. Okay, that should be enough now. And since I'm already at the oil, and I'm going to need all of it, I'll just connect these up to the factory. And I'm already out of power shards. Time to go slug hunting. Hmm, this one appears to be under the map. Well, I definitely don't have enough, but I'll have enough for now at least. 95, not bad, not bad. Time to get some oil. Well, I've recorded pretty much the entire journey of me getting all the pipes, but 
It's all just pinging for a node, going to said node, killing enemies at node. Placing extractor on node. Laying down long ass pipes and power cables. Rinse, repeat. Now you may be wondering, or not, whatever, I don't care. Uh, what am I using to power all the extractors and the pumps? Well, since I'm using literally all of the oil for the factory, I can't make fuel, so I can't have power that way. Well, I'm not using all the coal, so I could use that. But it's not enough, so... I can't really use that for power either. And I can't do nuclear, because at some point, to make nuclear fuel, I need oil. So I can't use that for power either. There is, of course, biomass, but that isn't automatable, so I'd have to just collect a f ton of biomass, and I'm not doing that. So the only other thing is geothermal generators. But again, there isn't enough geothermal power in the entire game to power this factory. So I made this battery farm. Under these foundations is a lot of power storage. There's around a thousand of them. It won't be enough, but it should be enough for now. That's not all the pipes, by the way. There was some down in abyss cliffs, and as the name implies, I had to get the pipes up a cliff. And another cliff. Only to find they need to drop back down over another cliff. So that was an annoying little time waster for just four pipes. Okay, that's all the pipes done. Not connected to the factory just yet, but at least they're now all in one place. Alright, now I just need some iron. A lot of iron. And I'm going to need some more power shards. Just thought I'd take a quick break and go for a leisurely swim under the map. Okay, that should hopefully be enough. This might take a moment. Eight hours later. So I've brought all the pipes to the factory now, and I've begun pulling all of the iron in as well. Uh, we don't talk about this ever, okay? It's just between you and me. It's temporary, I promise. I'll, I'll clean it up later, okay? Okay, okay, okay. How did he get up there? Get off my land, silly rabbit. Oh, there's another one. Doesn't appear to be attacking me though. Hello? Hello? Maybe I shouldn't kill it. Lol, get wrecked. Oh, I'm being attacked. Doesn't have very good aim though. What? What? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? Well, this is finicky. Probably should have put the supports in first, but oh well. As you can see, I've got a bit of iron going on up in here. I've tried to keep it relatively tidy, but the main goal here is the factory. Uh-oh, auto-save incoming. Or as I like to call it, sanity check. It's starting to take a few seconds now, and the build isn't even close to finished. Ah, okay, back to work. Yes, look at all that iron flow in. Mm. Still a way to go to reach the factory, though. 
Oh, by the way, that one yellow pipe that's probably been bugging you, or maybe not, it's the half full pipe, because there's enough oil to fill up 19 pipes with 300 left over, so that's the 300 left over pipe. Look, I made a box factory! Today, I'm connecting up the power lines to these here constructors. I don't remember what they're for, but I'm guessing they will need power at some point. And I've genuinely begun to lose my mind. I'm not sure if I'm even sane anymore. I don't think I've shown building walls yet, have I? Well, here you go. This is something I just knew you were waiting for. Okay, next floor. This is one of two floors of constructors to turn the steel beams into the final product, the screws. I've saved you the agony of placing the constructors because the real fun begins with placing the floor holes. Don't worry about this, I'm just making a path to separate into sections to make it a little less overwhelming to look at. They're not needed. The gaps were accounted for. <sighs> and now for the lifts. And of course, we can't forget about power. I mean, it hasn't actually got power, but... They'll be cabled up at least. Oh, almost forgot to set the recipes. Well, this is fine though, it's nice and simple, you just copy and paste. No need to lose my mind over this. Wait. I just thought of something. If I just... take this cable... all the way to the top... and then run back again because I forgot to flip the switch... Haha, <laughs> hover pack! This should speed things up a bit. Yes! Ah, oh, it's so much quicker. Kind of annoyed I didn't think of this sooner. Oh well. And now I can see which ones I've already done, because the indicator light changes. Just a few more to go. And now I get to do all the conveyors underneath. One floor hole at a time. And done. Lol. Joke. I'm only halfway. Uh, we have fun, don't we? Mmm. This. Rotate. Place. Repeat. I'm so glad I get to do this again. It's just... Oh, I wouldn't mind so much if I didn't have to rotate them every single time. Oh. Mess that up. Oh, fuck me. <sighs> oh, I can't. I don't know if I can keep doing this. Maybe I shouldn't. This isn't fun. This is painful. I'm actually losing the will to live. You know what? Okay, I shall persevere. And I'm done. Look, you see? I did it. Are you proud of me? So underneath these conveyors is the beam floor. And I need to figure out how I'm going to get these beams to split out. <sighs> uh, I think it's time for a coffee. So these are all 750 per minute on the belts that go up, so let's go up. Well, that was a helpful ladder. Thanks me, asshole. Okay. Each constructor takes five per minute. So let's do a little quick calculation. 150 constructors per belt. God damn. And there was what? 75 in a row? Oh, so two rows. Nice. Alright then. 
So this row and this row all need to connect into one manifold. Guess I'll start doing that. Alright, you want to hear a joke? So, <clears throat> there's a merger and a smart splitter in a production line. The merger sends pipes and beams and the smart splitter splits them into separate paths with also a third path as an overflow which loops back to the beginning. And the merger asks the smart splitter why do you even have an overflow if it's just going to reconnect to the start? And the smart splitter says Yo, you're not smart, you wouldn't understand. So one day the merger drops a pin onto the conveyor and the smart splitter sees the pin and sends it back through the overflow to the beginning goes back to the merger and again he sends it to the smart splitter. Smart splitter sees it again, goes through the overflow, back to the start. This continues for many cycles until the smart splitter finally stops and asks, why do you keep sending me this pin? I'm just going to keep sending it back to the start. And the merger says, I'm just trying to convey my point. I'll get me coat. <laughs> right, I've noticed something. As I've already demonstrated it several times, every time I pull down these conveyor lifts, I need to rotate them, right? You see, they alternate 90 degrees each time. But, this row over here, if I pull one down, it comes down straight. But the other row, they rotate 90 degrees. So, what's the difference between these rows? Well, I'll show you. You see, on these floor holes there's these little yellow arrows. And when the arrows are on the same side as the direction you want the lift to face, like this one, they rotate 90 degrees. So the arrows are either side of the lift. You see? So, what you're supposed to do is have the arrows to the sides. All this time, it's because there was a specific orientation to the floor holes that I didn't know about. I mean, they still don't know whether or not I want to face it forward or back, but if you rotate it once, and then place a lift, it will remember. I might make a short video about this, actually, explaining this, because it's not obvious, and it's never explained by the game, so it's uh, handy to know that information. But anyway, the rest of this floor I've placed wrong, so I'll just have to bear with it for now. For now. Or you'll just have to bear with it for now. And we're done. Just check for some errors now. There's one. And another. And another. Oh, and another. Alright, I've done all the conveyors on this floor. And now, I get to go down and do the other floor. Ah, <sighs> just, just got to... Gotta psych myself up, just get in the mindset. Just gotta get in the mindset. So I've done some quick maths and I think I've got a decent repeatable pattern. And it looks something like this. So each constructor makes 260 screws, which conveniently, if you times that by three, makes 780, which is the maximum output of a Mark V conveyor. And I'm working with very limited space here, relatively speaking. So, looks pretty cluttered and a little spaghettified, but it, there, there's, there's not, there's, there's a tiny amount of clipping, if you look hard enough. We'll just, we can just ignore that. But it's the best solution I could come up with. And I'm going to have two rows of lifts. These are all going to go outside of the building, like a kind of a, a cascade of screws, like a waterfall, a blue, blue screws waterfall down the side Cas cascade waterfall you'll see you'll see what i mean when i've done it and uh, so the width of the whole building is just enough to fit all of the conveyors along its edge for a million screws with 780 per belt i need 1283 belts or well 1282 and a little bit so this is one floor of two floors there will be another floor above this, which outputs slightly more screws than this one, for reasons. So there'll be there'll be four rows of outputs, in, one in front of the other, and there's 
four outputs per foundation. Four times four is 16. In case you didn't know. 1,283 divided by 16 comes to just over 80, which just happens to be the exact number of foundations wide this building is. And for very specific reasons, I'm going to lay 81 by 51. So each output is connected to three constructors, and there are 1,875 constructors on this floor, 25 rows of 75. Unfortunately, 25 doesn't divide into 3. But that's okay, because the last row of constructors at the back will just daisy chain in 3s, and the outputs will squeeze in the gaps to the sides, and such. Anyway, I should probably get on with it. Uh-oh, another sanity check incoming. Let me check myself. Am I dead? Man, what up? It's starting to take noticeably longer to save now. Maybe around 30 seconds. I'll probably have a counter on the screen or something, so you can just see. We'll just see how long it takes. Well, alright, back to the grind. So that's one row finished. Started the second row. That's all the figuring out I need to do. Now it's just a case of rinse repeat. Progress has been made, just not very much. Ugh, every time I see how far the other wall is, I remember this is just the first floor. I have to do all of this, plus the inputs, and the constructors on another floor above this one. Pray for me. This is awful. This pattern is awful. There's just... The, I've given myself too much to remember for a single row that I can't commit all of it to memory. Even if I just blank my mind and, and just repeat the actions through muscle memory, I have to actively think the entire process. Every single time. Final row. I'm on the final row. And I've got a bit better at it now, but it doesn't matter, because by the time I have to do this again for the next floor, I'll have already forgotten the pattern. And I'm not even done with this floor. I still have to hook up the arse end belts at the edges. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. This is a nice change, actually. It's much simpler. I'm almost enjoying it. Almost. Right, I'm done. Christ on a bike. Cover over this shit so I don't have to look at it. Next floor! I've begun laying the foundations for the final floor. Yep, the end is actually maybe kind of in sight. And I just thought I'd show you what it looks like before I cover it over. And I'm not sure how this comes across in the video, but the frame rate is starting to get really, really bad. But I suspect it will get much, much worse. I like doing this. It's easy enough to do, and it's so fast and chaotic with all the stuff flying over the place. Okay, that's the foundations laid out. I just need to put down a few constructors. Ta-da! That's all the constructors, and I've connected them all to power already. And I've set their recipes, and I've placed all the conveyor lifts, and the holes. So now all that's left to do is... Connecting all of the conveyors up. Yeah! Sure, this won't take me another several days. Floor holes, floor holes, floor holes, floor holes, floor, floor, hole, floor, holes, holes, floor, holes, floor, holes. Alright, I've finished doing these, but these are just the output conveyors. They go to the floor below, which I haven't done yet. And this floor is the input floor, and I haven't connected any of that up either. So basically, I've just spent the best part of an entire day accomplishing absolutely nothing. This floor is slightly longer than the floor below. One, because I couldn't fit all the constructors in evenly across both floors. And two, because it was a design choice so I can have the screws waterfall down the side of the building. So the top floor needs to come out a little bit further so it doesn't intersect with the screws falling from the floor below. So this floor has 77 constructors in each row. And this is where it gets a bit annoying. Most of the belts 
coming in carry 750 beams per minute, which was fine for the floor below since there was rows of 75, but of course this floor has 77 constructors per row. And not only that, but note that I said most of the belts carry 750. For reasons I can't remember, some conveyors have 780 beams, and some of them have 750 beams. And there's also a couple of conveyors that carry 325 or 525, that's just like the leftover bits. The other annoying thing is that because of the way the belts come in, I have to do the 780s first, followed by a 525, followed by the 750s, and then a 375. So every single input belt is going to feed part of a row, which is fed by another input belt. And not only that, I need to start from the back, which means starting from a row of 47 constructors. So I've made it sound much more confusing than it is, but basically the way I'm going to do it is have the first 780 belt feed the row of 47, all of the second row, and 32 constructors on the third row, and then the next belt of 780 will feed the remainder of the third row, all of the fourth row, and some of the fifth row, and it keeps going on like that. So I'm almost done here, but I must have fudged the numbers because I have no room for the last belt. I mean, there is room at the moment, but as soon as I've, I haven't finished this one, as soon as I finish that, there won't be enough left. So it's going to be fun to figure out what I've done wrong here. Well, I connected it up anyway. It doesn't make any sense. As far as I can tell, all the numbers add up, but somehow I don't have enough constructors for the amount of beams. Or I'm somehow making too many beams for this amount of constructors. Anyway, whatever. I don't care for now. I'm, I'll come back and figure this out later. Because now I'm going to go do the output floor. Yay! Remember how much fun this was? I sure do. Oh, you've caught me frozen in time. No wait, it's just the ever-increasing time that it takes to autosave. You might have also noticed the FPS counter in the corner of the screen. That's because I'm getting unbelievably massive drops when facing deep into the factory. The frame rate is properly beginning to chug. This is why you spread your factories across the map and not make one giant factory in one place dedicated to making a needless amount of one thing that everyone hates. Just an average 25 FPS. As if it wasn't painful enough already. Progress is very slow. The frame rate is actually killing me. I mean, it was already painfully tedious, and now it's just like... Wading through waist-high water, wearing concrete shoes, while listening to an audiobook titled an analysis on the challenges of social media and its possible impact on the mental well-being of future generations. And I still have this far to go. So the game just hit update 6. And now I have this boombox. And honestly, it couldn't have come at a better time. Anything to break the tedium. This music's actually fucking awesome. I'll get this done in no time. Finally, the last row of the last floor. I can actually see the light. I mean, there's still like the end bits that I have to do, but that's simple enough. Uh oh. Oh no. Oh, okay. Well, the game crashed. Ah, <sighs> I think. Yeah, that was because, yep, I hit the object limit. So if you didn't already know, there's a limit to how much you can build in this game. It's pretty high though, like over 2 million or something. It's not normally going to be an issue for pretty much everyone. That is unless you decide for some ridiculous reason to make a factory producing 1 million screws per minute. Well, shit. I was expecting to hit it at some point, to be honest. Still a little annoyed that it happened, though. Fortunately, there is a workaround. So if you go into your save folder, a couple folders deep, there's a config file called engine, and you just open it up in notepad, add these lines of code to the bottom, 
and then save it and that's it. It's literally that simple. And now you can exceed the object limit. But obviously the limit is there for a reason. There will be issues with this save now. Not quite sure what's going to happen, so I guess we'll just find out. Alright, we're back in. Doesn't seem like I've lost that much progress. Maybe one row or so. I'm just going to set the autosave to every 10 minutes, because I don't trust that it won't crash again. Just figuring out the last few leftover conveyors. Oh, I already regret changing the autosave. It takes so long. It takes over a minute now. I mean, it's, I guess it's still better than losing 20 minutes of progress. So I've been away for a few days, and I'm not exactly sure where I was. I mean, I'm not sure where I was in the factory, not where I've been away. Anyway. <laughs> but I think, I'll pretty much, I'm pre I think I was pretty much done. Just need to type a few loose ends here and there. Oh, seems I've left myself some very helpful notes here. Just double checking I have all the output belts I'm supposed to. So the building is 81 foundations wide. There's four conveyors per foundation. And two rows of conveyors. And on this floor there are five vacant gaps. Three on this side, two on the other side. So that's 643 conveyors on this floor. Okay. And on the other floor, there are 8 gaps, so that makes 640. So 640 plus, no not minus, plus 643 is 1,283, which is the magic number, if you remember. Because 1,283 times 780, which is the maximum output of a Mark V conveyor, is just over... One million. One million screws. Excellent. Hmm. Tiny amount of clipping there. I think I can live with that though. Oh, sounds like rain. I didn't know it rained in the desert. Let's have a look, shall we? Huh. I can't see any rain. That's weird. Well, the frame rate's pretty good up here compared to inside the factory. Well, it stopped fake raining in the desert now, but I'm having other issues. That's, uh, that looks uncomfortable. Okay, so, where the conveyors come out at the back of the building, I want them to cascade down like a waterfall. So I'm just building a kind of a scaffold here to make the conveyors. You get a nice sense of scale from here. I went into this knowing it would take a long time and a lot of effort and a lot of repetition but it still surprises me just how long it takes to do things at this scale you know a thousand screws ugh, easy ten thousand screws eh, i'll take a little longer a hundred thousand screws well yeah that's probably gonna take a while a million screws well n now you're just being stupid no one will ever do that what are you crazy The snapping on these conveyors is so goddamn finicky. This is going to take me all day. It's been 84 years. And I'm only halfway. It looks absolutely ridiculous. You'd have to be insane to keep doing this. Okay, finally the waterfall is complete. I mean, I still need to get rid of all the scaffold, but I'll get to that later. So now, I have over a thousand conveyors of screws coming down, and I need to do something with them. I did consider putting them in storage crates, but they would fill up in like 15 minutes. So instead, I'm just going to put them all into sinks. So that's what this huge space is for. I just need to place 1,283 sinks in this big open square. So the screws will cascade down the side of the building and then come up underneath. 
and into the sinks and then it turned into little slips of paper. From all the way back here you can see the entire waterfall. It doesn't even look like conveyors anymore. Just like a big wall of steel. Not really sure what's going on with that circle. I guess I'm so far away that I'm between two levels of detail or something. Unfortunately you can't really see the other three layers of conveyors behind the front one. So you're only really seeing a quarter of the waterfall but I mean, it still looks pretty ridiculous. Anyway, time to play some sinks. All done. Now I just need to connect them up. Okay, we're underneath the sinks now and I've just started one row. And I just need to continue this entire pattern all the way to the other side. Does that sound familiar to you? Did it a little differently this time. Because why not, you know? Bored of doing it the same. Why do you do it the same? Why, why, why do I have to do the same? What if I do it different? What, what are you going to do? Huh? So I've been building for about 500 hours now, and I've just noticed that stackable conveyor poles have different build modes. It's right there in the middle of the screen. It's been staring at me in the face the whole time, and I didn't see it. There's the default mode, which just places one at a time, but then if you press R, toggles the build mode into zoop mode. You can zoop conveyor poles. I mean, it's not huge, but I've been placing a lot of conveyor poles. And only realizing this now, when I'm pretty much finished with the factory, <sighs> makes me a little bit sad. Right, all done. Now I'm going to power everything up so I can troubleshoot all the probably hundreds of issues that I've overlooked throughout this build. I'll make a separate switch for each floor and go through each process one by one and make it easier that way. Hmm, I have a broken pipe. Trying to find it in amongst all this is a task in itself. So I've just painted it red and then I can just follow it down until I find the issue. Well I traced the pipe halfway across the map pretty much to the beginning of the extractor but I think I found the issue. There's two pipes here that merge and I've put valves to prevent backflow. And I think that's what the problem is, is that the valves affect somehow the head lift or it could just be the fact that it's on a slight incline. I don't know, but whatever the cause, slapping a pump on it should sort it out. Here it comes. I think that did it. All right, next floor. Couple machines missing connections. Well, this entire row isn't getting any ingots for some reason. Hmm. Uh, ha, here we go. It's under here. Oh my god, there's a lot going on here. Okay, here it is. Goes up here. Oh, somehow I missed the conveyor lifts for this entire row. Oh dear. So this is 10 entire rows of inputs that aren't working for some reason. Ugh. Oh, wait, it's okay. I just forgot to put the lifts in again. Oh, this frame rate though. God, I seem to love missing entire rows of conveyor lifts. All right, screw floor one. Just flip the power switch here and it actually seems like everything works. At least from here it does. Let's check out the logistics. Oh yeah, screws be a flowing. Oh holy shit. Oh my god, that was alarming. Jesus Christ. Okay, that is kind of awesome. Gonna need to check the output though. So I'm gonna turn on all the sinks so I can watch it waterfall down the side of the building. See if it all flows correctly. Okay, here we go. You ready? Okay, everything is on, and nothing is coming out. So that's, um, oh no, here we go. Huh, looks like they're going upwards. That's weird. I mean, they are going down, it's just the frame rate is so bad, they appear as if they're going up. Oh, we got a few empty ones here. Man, this looks amazing though. It's kind of mesmerizing. Okay, top floor. Hmm. 
looks pretty good. Of course, I've missed an entire row of connections again. Alright, now that all the belts are populated, it's time to check on the waterfall once again. Hup! Alright, moment of truth. Ta-da! Oh. There's just one conveyor that doesn't work. Of course there is. Okay, let's see what the issue is here. And of course it goes all the way to the back. Alright, spot the obvious problem. Right, although there's still nothing coming out of the other two. Maybe they aren't connected properly. No? Hmm. Not getting any beams. Oh. All of these aren't working. Great. Wow, okay, I have several issues here. This row isn't even connected up. And even if it was, there's no beams. And there's no beams to these other rows either. And I think I know why that is. I forgot to sort out this little conundrum. I'm just re-watching the earlier video I made to try and figure out what I did. Because I can't remember any of this. Damn, look at that frame rate. It's like butter smooth. I still have no idea what's going on. So I'm just going to have to go down every single row one by one and count the splitters. And hope that something doesn't match up. 72, 74, 76... What the fucking hell is going on here? Huh? The hell? Wait. None of these are even connected. Why is there just a lone splitter getting beams? What? I'm so confused. I don't even know what's supposed to be happening here. Okay. So, this is what it is. Is that... God. My brain's given up. So it turns out that actually there are no 780 belts they're all 750s and the 525 was actually a 510 and I have no clue why I thought why I ever thought that they were 780 but hey so essentially the top floor has the same beltage as the floor below 12 and a half belts of 750 plus a 510 for the extra bit at the end but of course the top floor has rows of 77, so I still need to do that weird splitting of belts to rows. So yeah, now I need to rebelt this entire floor all over again. I've noticed another problem, that is that some of the waterfall isn't getting the full supply of screws. That's probably just missing a few connections somewhere. Okay, I think I'm done. But uh, before I show you the waterfall, I, uh, <laughs> I'm going to tear it all down and build it slightly differently. Yeah, I know, but trust me, it's going to look a hundred times better. I think. Okay, now, I've spent a long time decorating this, so I wanted to make a little montage going into the big reveal. So, I hope you enjoy this as much as I enjoyed making it. So there it is. It was a long and excruciating journey, but I think it was worth it. Even if there's no real point to any of this, and likely when this game eventually hits 1.0, this will all become completely irrelevant. 
But, you know, I learned a few things along the way. And it's... No, okay, I'm not doing that. <laughs> and seeing it all come together at the end. When I first saw the waterfall flow, it still just mesmerizes me a little bit. And it's definitely been one of the biggest tasks that I've ever committed myself to. I don't just mean in this game, I mean in my entire life. I've never dedicated so much time and effort to one thing. And to be completely honest, I'm never doing that again. Overall, it was a reasonably fun experience, but... Yeah, uh, fucking Jesus, mother of Christ. That was a task. It was an absolute fucking task. Thanks for watching. And fuck me, we're done with the fucking...